a game like this in a stadium like this? But Charlie, I think it means a lot to the Kansas City Chiefs because the stadium is, is the fans are close to the field, and if the fans are in the seats and they're making a lot of noise, it's like a 12th man for the Chiefs. The Chiefs have won three of the last four games, times they've played in this stadium against the Raiders, and the fans have been a definite advantage for them. So for the Los Angeles Raiders, there is Tom Flores, the head coach, a record of six and three. They got off, they got off to a quick start. They were four and zero. Oh, then they lost three of their last five. So they kind of came back to the pack, you might say. Kansas City's record is four and five. Kicking off will be Chris Barr for the Raiders, and for the Kansas City Chiefs, number 27, the Otis Brown is set for the return. Off on the wings is Jerome Cherry on the far side, and Derwood Rockmore on the near side. The temperature, it's in the low 60s, overcast, 30% chance of rain. They say we might even have thunder showers. But it's a pleasant afternoon so far for football. The crowd standing, and we're underway at Arrowhead. The Otis Brown will down the ball in the end zone. So Kansas City will start on their own 20-yard line first down. Let's look at the offense. Bill Kinney, the quarterback. He'll be throwing a lot. Brown and Jackson are the running backs. Here we see the wide receivers, Carson, Carson Marshall, and Beckman will see Willie Scott also at tight end. And that offensive line for Kansas City, their prime responsibility today will be to protect the quarterback. They are going to throw the ball. They're rushing offense. Only 35 yards against Denver last week. Only 55 yards against the Raiders when they played last month. Carson in motion. Can he just throw? Just what you expected. And it is incomplete. Trying to hit the Otis Brown coming out of the backfield. It will be second down and 10. Rod Martin picked up the coverage. And speaking of the Raiders on defense, their basic set is a 3-4. But now, as you know, situation defense, you will see everybody in and out for both the Kansas City Chiefs and the Los Angeles Raiders. A defensive front three, Howie Long, Reggie Kinlaw, and Lyle Alzado. And as we mentioned, they are... A big play defense, and we'll set the rest of them for you in just a moment. Second and six. Billy Jackson. Jackson has five yards to the 25, so it will be third down and five for Kansas City. Rod Martin and Ted Hendricks, the outside linebackers, were there for the Los Angeles Raiders. Charlie, and you, you mentioned Martin and uh, Hendricks. Those are the two big play people at the linebacker position for the Raiders. Martin and Hendricks are the guys, if you're a quarterback, you got to watch out for because they can cause fumbles, cause interceptions, or get in there and sack the quarterback. And while you're watching Ted Hendricks move all over the place, it's Rod Martin that'll slip in and make the tackle. Third and five. Ken Thomas in the backfield from the shotgun, Bill Kenny. Pressure. And he is dropped. They will rule an incomplete pass, but it was Bill Pakel, the rookie for Rutgers, who was coming, and he nailed Kenny, who is still down. Pakel taken in the second round of the draft, number 71. We'll take another look at it. The Raiders are number three in the entire league in sacks. Boy, I'll tell you, if, you're, if you want to ever play in the National Football League, you don't want to play quarterback in that situation. They rule an incomplete pass, bring it back to the 25. It is fourth down and five. And Jim Arnold, with a 41-yard average, is in to kick to Greg Pruitt. So the Raiders should have excellent field position when they move on offense for the first time. Short kick, fair kick. 42-yard line, Raiders in their own territory. Three yards on the punt. Mark Wilson, of course, the young quarterback with Allen and King, the running backs. Kamal Muhammad will be in there replacing Cliff Branch, who is out again this week with a hamstring uh, pull. And the offensive line for the Raiders, they're more a containing offensive line. They will say they're a pocket line. They block for the pocket for Wilson to throw.
Jackson comes out throwing. Over the middle, pass complete to Todd Christensen, the tight end, in the Kansas City territory at the Kansas City 48-yard line. It will be close to the first down. Thomas Howard makes the tackle along with Charles Jackson. Defensively, still in Bell, the defensive ends. Outstanding. The linebackers. Jackson, Charlie Jackson, is, is really the outstanding big play man in, the, in their defensive line court. And that secondary, led by Deron Cherry, the free safety, who has six interceptions. The chains are going to come out for a measurement. Charlie, it's interesting to note that both teams, both offenses, start off by throwing uh, the football, both on play-action passes. We expected it from Kansas City. Did you expect it from Los Angeles? Well, First L.A. has been very successful throwing, and I think what he was really doing was looking for one of his wide receivers who are his big play people. Christensen was just his outlet, but the Kansas City is, like we said before the ball game, has got to protect Kenny more than they're doing uh, so far in this ball game. That's not the way they want to start off the ball game with a sack. First down, Kansas City, 48-yard line. Wilson to throw again. Over the middle again, incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Calvin Muhammad, the intended receiver. Wilson, last week, as Tom Flores, the head coach, had laryngitis. On Saturday, he didn't even call plays. On Sunday, they had a delay of game on an audible because they couldn't hear him. And so we talked <laughs> How to How do you do that again? <laughs> Well, one of the other problems, Charlie, was he was checking off one time. An offensive lineman did not hear the checkoff, and the defensive man got in and hit the ball carrier, Allen, just as he was getting the ball. But his voice is all right today. From the pocket, lots of time. Pass is complete to Marcus Allen coming out of the backfield to the 42-yard line of Kansas City. A gain of six. It'll be third down and four. Gary Spaney makes the tackle. Now, let's go for an update. Actually, it's been the offense that's been leaky recently. The defense has been playing pretty good. But the Steelers, their defense is tough, and we'll be keeping an eye on that ball game. Third down and four. This Kenny King. Sweet left side. Good defensive play. Keeps bringing out. Lloyd Burris makes the tackle. An interesting combination of offensive calls for the Raiders. Well, it was an interesting call, Charlie, and a good call for the Raiders because the Chiefs had six defensive backs in the ball game. Normally, when you have six defensive backs, one of them's got to play linebacker. You see Burris, 34, playing off the block of Allen, slips outside, gets some help, makes a tackle. They're going to have to punt the ball away. Ray Guy will be kicking for the Raiders, 44.3 yard average in his career. He has kicked more than 18 miles in the National Football League. Hancock and Cherry are set for the return. 18 miles. That's a long way. That is. Goes for the corner and he hangs it up. And it is safe, literally, into the end zone. We'll have a touchback. We'll bring it out. To the 20-yard line, a kick of 43 yards for Ray Guy. We have no score. 12.06 left to go. We're in the first quarter. We'll be back. Yeah. Bill Kenny, the quarterback, is back in the ball game. He was back at the end of the last series. Check the scoreboard, as you can see. Other games going on. Kenny has pressure, and he stops at the 11-yard line. Loss of nine. Jack Squires is the man who got him, number 58. Charlie, as we mentioned in our pregame show, the thing that the Chiefs offensive line has to do is protect the quarterback. They're not doing it very well so far. Two sacks in uh, four plays. Now, they know that the Raiders are going to be blitzing because the Raiders know that the Chiefs are going to be throwing. From an offensive standpoint, how do you counteract it when you do not have a running game? The Chiefs do not have a running game. Well, you have to be able to pick up their stunts. Their offensive, their defensive linemen are crossing. They're not doing anything that different. They just have to execute them. And if you don't think the Raiders aren't ready to send everybody, bring the kitchen sink with them, is any kind of an offensive motion, and they are coming, everybody. This one against Kansas City for a legal procedure. So the Chiefs making the mistakes. This and that hurt them in the Denver ball game. It's hurt them all year. 
False start, number 73 in the offense. Ball start on Bob Simmons, the offensive right guard. I think Billy Jackson, the fullback, may have been moving too, but this is a problem the Chiefs have had. Offensive penalties have really been killing. Second down, 23. Trying to get a little room for Otis Brown, and he'll go to the nine-yard line. So only a couple. It'll be third down, 21 yards to go. Reggie Kinlaw, the middle guard, makes the tackle. And what this, of course, sets up, third and 21. Very difficult to pick up the first down. And again, you'll have to kick. Greg Freud could give the Raiders good field position. Well, it's very tough to be in a situation back in your own uh, your own territory. As we see Squire, Billy Jackson coming. Squire gets low, tries to fill the hole, which he does with bodies, allows Ted Hendricks, number 83, to come from the left and cover him for the tackle. Four wide receivers in for Kansas City. Bill Kenny, the quarterback, gets back into the end zone. Drops it off in the right flat to Billy Jackson. Jackson to the 15-yard line, so he picks up six. But it will be fourth down and 15. Mike Davis, the strong safety, makes the tackle. And Bob Nelson, the linebacker, was also there. That was really a no-win uh, situation for Bill Kenny. Third and 21 from your own end zone. The Raiders dropped eight men back in zone coverage. They weren't going to let him throw the ball downfield. Throw a little swing pass. We'll come up, make the tackle, punt the ball away. Jim Arnold will be kicking, and Greg Pruitt is set for the return. There is no win today, not a factor at this point in the ballgame. Better kick this time. 37-yard line. Here comes Pruitt. And he's wrapped up at the 43, about six yards on the return. 47 yards on the kick. Hang time, 4.2 seconds. Steve Spotter makes the tackle for Kansas City. No score, 10.09 left to go. First quarter, we'll be back. Down and 10, 32-yard line, Kansas City. Steve Spotter showing blitz. Here's pressure. Here's the scramble. Mark Wilson to about the 26-yard line. He'll have six. It'll be third down and four. Albert Lewis makes the tackle for the Kansas City Chiefs. It's one of the big advantages that Wilson gives that Oakland off that L.A. offense. Excuse me. That's once. <laughs> The, the Raider uh, offense is that he can run. He can scramble out of the pocket. He can move around in the pocket. And if nobody is open, he can take off running. Doki Williams comes in. Calvin Muhammad comes out for the Raiders again. Cliff Branch did not start. For Los Angeles, still bothered by the hamstring. Third down four. Timeout. Mark Wilson either wanted an audible, did not like the defense, Wanted to change his offense. Main thing, did not want to make a mistake. Well, he may have been running out of time in the 30-second clock also. Sometimes you see what the defense is doing and your offensive play is not good, and you don't want to check off. We'll be right back. Third down and four at the Kansas City 26-yard line. Mark Wilson has completed three of five for 33 yards. Does he throw here? Well, he's got to throw. He's just got to figure out what the Kansas City defense is doing with six defensive backs. Some of those backs are up where linebackers should be. Here they come. And he dumps it complete to Barnwell. And he'll pick up the first down. Albert Lewis makes it. That's hard to read with six little defensive backs scurrying in and out. They never, they never know where to line up, Charlie. <laughs> now for an update. Let's go to New York City. He scores throughout the afternoon. Here's the draw, Marcus Allen. He was cut off inside, saw it immediately, jumped to the outside, is two to the 15. It'll be second down and eight. Lloyd Burris, along with Gary Spadey, make the tackle. Now, thus far, the Raiders, offensively and defensively, have been dominating the ballgame. They've been dominating the ballgame, and the reason they've been doing that, I feel, is the Chiefs offensively have not established anything. The easiest way to establish something offensively is to run the ball. They have not got a running game. They, it, a running game allows the offensive lineman, the quarterback, and the wide receivers to kind of settle in. They came out throwing right away, and you really don't get your tempo. 8 15 yard line. Little fake, play action, lots of time, loops it into the end zone, and it's there. Touchdown. Frank Hawkins. 
Hawkins is kind of the unknown man in the backfield for the Raiders. You know about Marcus Allen. You know about Kenny King. Touchdown pass of 15 yards to Frank Hawkins. His fourth touchdown of the year. Watch 27. Frank Hawkins. He makes a fake. Slips through the line. Now he's heading to the top of your screen to the far corner. Wilson reads it all the way. The wide receiver on that side had taken his man across field, clearing all that out, putting Hawkins on a linebacker, good execution, six points for the Raiders. And a drive of 57 yards, Chris Barr will attempt the point after. And it is good. So the Los Angeles Raiders are out in front by a score of seven to nothing. We have seven minutes and three seconds left to go. We're in the first quarter. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City will be back for the kickoff. Not for the Raiders. And Theodis Brown is the deep back on the return for Kansas City with Jerry and Rockmore off on the way. And then tripped up to the 26-yard line, 21 yards on the return. Jeff Barnes is the man who got a hand on the ankle. Number 27 is Frank Hawkins, 5'9", 210 pounds, out of the University of Nevada at Reno in his third year. A fifth-round draft choice. And his fourth touchdown. And here's another look at it of the season. The reason this play works is because the Chiefs played man-to-man -man coverage. If it had been in zone coverage, the cornerback would have been back there. Wilson would have gone to another receiver. But the scouting report says they play man coverage. That play will be good inside the 20-yard line. They mark the ball at the 25-yard line. First down. Carson in motion. Now he reverses. Billy Jackson. And Jackson has... Seven, maybe eight yards rushing. Kinlaw with the tackle. That is a big play for Kansas City. I think this is a big play, Charlie, because they have to establish some kind of running game, even early on, just to set the tempo for their offensive players. Let their linemen fire out. Let them get across the line of scrimmage and make some blocks. Here you see Kinlaw, 62, fighting with Rush. Does a pretty good job. And during the play, number 81, tight end Willie Scott. Injured on the far side. We have an official timeout with 6.39 left to go. We're in the first quarter. The Raiders lead the Chiefs by a score of 7 and up. Willie Scott, let's take another look. He's at the left of your screen. Howie Long, 75. Steps on his ankle. Certainly hope he's all right. He's walking off the field under his own power. And then Howie Long, of course, fell on the back of his legs, as you could see. Howie's 6'5", 270 pounds falling on him. Let's check the scoreboard. Gary Anderson with a 45-yard field goal, 10 to nothing, Pittsburgh. Then Dickey did. John Jefferson for 18 yards, 7 to nothing, with 519 left. Cincinnati walking all over Houston. Exactly. Second down and two, 33-yard line. Number nine is Bill Kenny, chief quarterback. They're running again. The Otis Brown, he will not pick it up. They're going to mark it just shy of the 35-yard line. This will be third down and about half a yard for the first down. So now the Chiefs, even though if we have stated they do not have a running attack, the poorest rushing game in the NFL, averaging only 71, 74 yards rushing per game this season. They're trying to establish that. Is it to get a rhythm that you were talking about? Let's get a rhythm and also to settle down the Raider defense. You just can't come out and let the Raiders tee off on you. Just come up and say, I'm going to play pass and no run. They've got to get some running game at least going early in the ballgame. Third down, half a yard. You gamble and go long here. No, you need a first down. And you get it. That's why... Like it's like going in for the goal line. <laughs> well, it was. It was a goal line situation for the Raiders. And the reason I say you go for the first down, Charlie, if they don't make it with a long pass, then you have to punt the ball away again. It's more important for the for the Chiefs to keep the ball and to establish some momentum and keep the ball, let their offense make some positive plays, than it is to try a long play, even if it would have been there. Because yep. you still may not hit it. Here we see uh, Reggie Kinlaw in the middle of that Raider defensive line. 85, Ed Beckman with tight end in motion. The lead blocker for Billy Jackson, the ball carrier. Gain of two, 37-yard line, first down. Little play action, pass, knockdown. Good defensive play by Lester Hayes. Stripping the ball from Henry Marshall. Good play all the way. Saw it. One of the fine defensive backs in the NFL right there. 
looks like he may have injured himself. Why do the Raiders only have nine interceptions, though? Very low on the interception rate. It's, it's hard to figure out, Charlie. I asked Tom Floyds about that earlier in the week, and he doesn't have an answer for it either. You know, the Raiders play a lot of bump and, bump and run, tight man-to-man -man coverage, and sometimes when you play in the man and not the ball, you don't get many interceptions. Willie Scott having an ankle retaped on the sideline. Second down and 10. Kansas City, they're on 37-yard line. Raiders lead it. Have another. Jackson. They string it out. Gets around the corner. Good move by Billy Jackson. Jackson in his third year from Alabama. His seventh round draft choice in 1981. Trying to establish a semblance of a running game for Kansas City. James Davis made the tackle. You know, I'm sure the Raiders were coming into this ball game were thinking pass, pass, pass. The Chiefs do not run that much. And they were ready for the pass. And they showed that on the first two series. This series, the Chiefs are running the ball and they're moving it. The Raiders are going to have to readjust to stop it for now and then get back to their pass rush when the time comes. Third down and two. Kansas City now in reality with three tight ends. Ed Beckman, Ron Wetzel, and Rich Baldinger, who is a guard tackle, moves out to tight end the block on the play. Third down, two. Good continuing effort. James Davis was there for the defense. And it was Billy Jackson again in the short yardage situation. 5'10", 215 pounds. He's the leading rusher for Kansas City this season, but he only has 297 yards starting the game. Just good running on the part of Billy Jackson. They really, the Raiders' defensive line stacked up the offensive line. There was no hole. He bounced outside. The linebackers are supposed to scrape off of the pile and make all the tackles. They weren't there that time. A gain of five to the 50. First down. First time that the Chiefs offense has had anything going, and they're doing it on the ground. And they stay on the ground. Inside handoff to Lotus Brown. And he was bumped, stopped momentarily at the 50, still continued to pick up a couple of yards before Bob Nelson brought him down. I love to watch. I love to watch this line play. Here we'll see another look at Nelson, number 51. Ball's coming right at him. He hits him. Good running by Theotis Brown. Theotis Brown has been a big plus for this chief offense. Ever since he's arrived five weeks ago, he's added a little life to it, caught a lot of balls. Big play man now for as far as their backfield is concerned is Theotis Brown. Billy Jackson, the remaining back. Second down, seven. Look for Bill Kenny to throw, and he does. Loops it on a timing pattern. And he overthrows the intended receiver, Henry Marshall. Lester Hayes back at the ball game. He was out just for a moment at the defensive coverage. It will be third down and seven at the 47-yard line of Los Angeles. Today's telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Kansas City Chiefs and the National Football League is prohibited. The ball just inside the 48-yard line. In the stats, they call it the 47 once he gets across the marker. So it's third down, seven officially, but in reality, it's eight. 321 left to go. First quarter, 7 0 Raiders. Pass is to Chase Marshall. Marshall has the first down. The Chiefs convert and listen to the crowd. Lester Hayes makes the defensive play. It's a good call by Makovic on the sideline who calls the plays for Kenny and a good execution. Marshall on a crossing route coming across the middle of the field. Got a step on Hayes. That's a much easier throw when you're throwing man-to-man -man, against man-to-man -man coverage going across the field because you can see it better. When you're running straight away from the quarterback, that's a low percentage throw, and the Raiders would like to have you throw that ball 90% uh, of the time. A gain of 15 yards on the last play, first down. 32-yard line of Los Angeles. Going deep in the right corner against Hayes, and it is incomplete. Trying to hit Henry Marshall. Lester Hayes uses that sideline as well as any defensive back in the league. But not only the sideline, Charlie, but he also uses the end zone. Now, the Chiefs are on their own, are on the Raiders' 33-yard line. Most cornerbacks, and Hayes included, are smart enough to realize that, hey, they're probably not going to throw anything real deep because the end zone's right back there, so don't have to worry about it. The Chiefs come out and probably pick that up on the films they were studying this week and say, he doesn't, he settles inside the 30 or 40-yard line. Let's run a takeoff right by him when we get inside the 40-yard uh, line. That time is good coverage. Now from the shotgun, second and 10. Raiders, 32-yard line. Los Angeles leads 7-0. 
Then he has protection. He goes deep this time. Missed call on the route. It's intercepted. Ted Watts with the interception, but there's a flag down back at the 42. Holding against Kansas City, it will be refused. The interception will stand up. The chief receiver cut it off. And now one of the officials, they're running back in for a conference. They say it's against the Raiders. So a race, the interception in Kansas City will have the ball. Tom Flores, he's not sure exactly what's going on. John Makovic, he's trying to get some points on the board. So Bob Frederick or... On the defense, number 75. First down. Penalty call on Howie Long, moved the ball to the 27-yard line. Defensive foul, and this one carries with it the automatic first down. It's an unusual call, Charlie, for a defensive lineman to be called for holding. They can grab the offensive lineman and pull him one way or the other, but they cannot grab another man and yank him out of the way so one of their defensive men can go up through the uh, hole and get the quarterback. Maybe it was that kind of a call. Big break for Kansas City. They have a first down, Los Angeles 27 yard line. Swing right side, and very quickly a flag comes down. The ball pops loose. The ball had been blown dead. The Otis Brown trying to pick up some yardage, and Jack Squag and Mike Davis were right on top of it. It was well read for the defense. It was well read. It was a blitz. They were coming first down, blitz up the middle. Kenny saw it and got rid of it. We mentioned the name Jack Squarek, linebacker for the Raiders. He is replacing Matt Millen. He, Millen's still bothered by that uh, bruised arch in his foot. That's a tough injury, too, Charlie, to come back from because all your weight is on that area of your foot, and it's very tough to get that uh, to heal. Squarek from the University of Illinois. And speaking of the Illini, they, they're headed for the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of the Illegal Bowl. Illegal use of the hands by the offense, number 73, and it will be refused. Penalty against Bob Simmons, it is refused. It is a loss from the 27 back to the 35-yard line, loss of eight. It'll be second down 18. Charlie, one of the keys to this game, as we talked about, is protecting Kenny. It'll be interesting to watch the defensive front three of the Raiders and their linebackers to see what kind of games they're doing to try to break down that protection. Inside, as you can see, the 35-yard line of the Raiders. 2.56 left to go. Time remaining. First quarter. Raiders lead at 7-0. Second and 18. Pass is caught at the 25-yard line. Carlos Carson, number 88 of the receiving end, and Ted Watt, who had that interception taken away on the penalty, was the man who threw him down. We will see Carson, number 88. This pattern is just designed to get half of the yardage back. He goes down around 12 yards, gives him a good target. The ball is drilled, and now Ted Watts, the defensive back, gets his save. Says, if you're going to catch that ball on me, you're going to pay for it. Game of 11. It is third down and seven. Now the Chiefs are already within field goal range of McLeod. But they trail 7 0. 2 13 and counting time remaining first quarter. And he throws, it is picked off. Lester Hayes has the interception. That is the first interception of the season for Lester Hayes. And he reverses <laughs> his field again and draws a crowd at the 38-yard line. That is only the 10th interception for the Raiders' defense, and as I mentioned, the first of the year for Hayes. Well, this is just great coverage. Kenny has good protection. He's looking for Carlos Carson. Hayes, good coverage, steps in front of him, makes the play. I think Lester is thinking right here now, if he can run back and forth across the field enough times, he'll get those offensive linemen tired enough that they'll run out of uh, steam. He will take a good look at it. Coverage, good coverage. Hayes got help deep. Sees the ball all the way. Good play by Lester Hayes. The 38 yard line. Here's Marcus Allen. Allen to the 42, gain of four. It'll be second down and six. When we look at that replay, we could look at it again. Hayes almost does a mirror action with the receiver. Well, Charlie, what I'm saying, when he has help deep, I mean he has a defensive back that's deep 
like a free safety deep downfield that covers anything deep that the wide receiver may run. Hayes only has to cover the short thing, short out, short in, or the curl, so he can overplay the short stuff and really react to anything thrown short. Second down and six. Los Angeles in possession zone, 42, Mark Wilson. Far side, passes, Albert Lewis knocked the ball away. He was going for an interception. He couldn't get it. We're going to New York. Just does everything. They're, they're higher score than the Pittsburgh offense. Third down and six. Six men in the secondary for Kansas City. Over the middle underneath the coverage. Three ball. It's incomplete. It popped up. There was a scramble. And it fell to the artificial surface. Barnwell, the intended receiver. It will be fourth down and six. And Ray Guy will be kicking. Wilson, who is six foot six, can see over these offensive linemen, throws the ball right there where he could be caught. Barnwell didn't make the catch, knocks it up into the air. Lewis, the rookie who's caught three interceptions already this year, couldn't come down with that one. And here is Ray Guy to kick. Anthony Hancock is set for the return. <laughs> he is way back there, too. He gives him a lot of yards. Christensen, the tight end, snap on the punt. Fair catch, taken at the 21-yard line, four-second hang time for Ray Guy. One minute and three seconds, that is the time remaining in the first quarter. A kick of only 37 yards for Ray Guy. Kansas City has the ball. They'll mark it at the Kansas City 22-yard line. Last week against Seattle, the kickers for the Raiders, Ray Guy and Chris Barr, averaged field position following either a kickoff or a punt for Seattle a week ago was on their own 28-yard line. That's, that's putting the other team in a hole. Kansas City from their own 22 first down. Carson in motion. Kenny to throw. Drops it off underneath the coverage to Billy Jackson. Jackson is the first down. 34 yard line. Gain of 12. Jack Squag with the tackle. Pittsburgh 17 up and on that Mel Blount uh, run for a touchdown. Philadelphia on a Tony Franklin 19-yard field goal, 10 to nothing. Don't worry about that. Dallas always trails. Them getting <laughs> they the always come back. 7-7, Green Bay, Cleveland. Cincinnati, ooh, Houston. Ooh, 24-0. Kansas City first down their own 34-yard line. Billy Jackson. Fighting his way for three yards to the 37. It'll be second down and seven as Rod Martin and Richie Kinlaw make the tackle for the Raiders, and time will run out in the first quarter. We'll take a timeout. After the first period, the score, the Los Angeles Raiders seven, the Kansas City Chiefs nothing. We'll be back in just a moment to Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. By a score of seven to nothing, Kansas City with the ball. Second and seven, their own 37-yard line. Carson in motion. Not that good a handoff. The Otis Brown. The Otis Brown. 43-yard line. Should be maybe a half a yard or a yard shy of the first down. Let's look at the statistics in the first quarter. Pretty close. Time of possession, Kansas City, but the score, of course, to Los Angeles. Exactly, and the, the, the surprising thing, the Chiefs are out rushing the Raiders. Uh, the Raiders with Marcus Allen, and uh, the, the Chiefs really don't have that outstanding runner that you look for, but like we said, they need to establish some kind of run to get their passing game uh, going. It is enough for the first down. Kansas City, a first down, just outside their own 43-yard line. Birkenhoff, Buddy, Rush, Simmons, and Lutz, that offensive line. Here's the last play. You see the offensive line 
David Lutz, 72, blocking Watts. It's help from McElroy on the tackle. First down, Kansas City. Billy Jackson, the remaining back. On the draw. A lose about half a yard on the play. We call it second and 11. Mike Davis, the strong safety, was not fooled. We have 14 minutes, 10 seconds left to go first half. Let's go to New York City. The number for a playoff spot is now 1984. Second and 11. The Chiefs still with a chance for a playoff spot. Big game. Pass to Ken Thomas, and he is dropped in the track. Rod Martin is the man who brought him down. Of course, the Raiders in Denver tied for the lead in the West with identical 6-3 record. And the Raiders, one of the strong possibilities, of course, for the playoffs in Kansas City, kind of just hanging on by their fingernails well, right now. Charlie, the Raiders really jumped out, really got off the gun fast at the start of the season. They've kind of backed up a little bit. Seattle beat them twice. They lost the game to Washington. Flory says the only game they really should have lost was last week against Seattle. Then they got outplayed. The Raiders now with six men in the secondary, third down and 11. The Chiefs have four wide receivers. Ken Thomas. He'll only have three yards to the 46. It'll be fourth down and eight. Ted Watts makes the defensive play. And that means that Jim Arnold will be kicking for the Kansas City Chiefs. Bill Kenny is having all kinds of problems reading the coverages and the blitzes and stunts of the of the Raiders. They'll do that to you. They'll, they'll make you look bad three or four series in a row, and then you'll hit a big play on them. So as far as playing the Raider defense, you can't lose your confidence. The next time you go out, maybe the time you go to score. Arnold kicking to Greg Pruitt. <laughs> and he really hangs this one up. This is his best kick of the day. Goes to the sideline. And he gets it. The hang time was four and a half seconds. And the market out just outside the 10 yard line. Did you say he was kicking that ball to Greg Pruitt? He didn't kick that to Greg Pruitt. He kicked it away from him. A wise move. We've got a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. Raiders leading the Chiefs by a score of seven to nothing. And Los Angeles has the ball at their own 10 yard line. Marcus Allen. And he flashes to the 15, gain of five. It'll be second down and five. Gary Spaney makes the tackle for Kansas City. We mentioned earlier that not only can Marcus run with the ball, he's a good receiver. He, uh, he's also a good passer, a high school quarterback. His brother, Damon, is the quarterback at Cal State Fullerton, and his other brother, Michael, is an outfielder on the baseball team at Cal State Fullerton, and Damon is also a pitcher. So there's a lot of athletic ability in that family. And I'm sure uh, there are a lot of universities that are wishing that they'll uh, show their wares at their school. Second and five. He finds just a little bit of an opening, and then we find some pushing and shoving after the whistle. They'll mark it dead at the 25-yard line. Gain of 10, Burris and Cherry make the stop. It will be a first down for the Raiders. Important first down. If Kansas City could have held, they would have started with good field position. But right now, again, the Raiders on the move. That's a good point, Charlie. There are so many critical plays in a ball game that aren't obvious, like making a first down, coming out of your own territory. Here you take another look at Marvin, 65, turning up the field and blocking on Blanton, 59. Little things like that, that's an important first down to keep them with the ball and get them out of their own territory. Mickey Marvin, lead blocker for Marcus Allen, first down, 25. Wilson throws a little wobbly and behind Malcolm Barnwell. <laughs> Dino Mangiero, the nose tackle for the Chiefs, was putting the pressure on Mark Wilson. It'll be second down and 10. Raiders at their own 25-yard line. Mark Wilson will call a lot of his own plays. Uh, he'll confer with Tom Flores on the sideline about what he likes, uh, especially on a first down or a second down situation. And maybe if we make a first down or two first downs, go with this play. As soon as we get to the 50-yard line, we'll go with this play. But Mark Wilson will call his own plays. And it's a little bit difficult for him because he didn't do it in college, and it takes a while for him to get into swing of Second and 10. Wilson from BYU. All alone is the tight end, John Christensen. The number three receiver in the National Football League. Christensen 
is quite a man. Well read, bit of theology, bit of <laughs> philosophy in his background. We have a story of a sack. Good move by Mark Wilson. Goes sliding to the 50-yard line. He picks up 12 from the 38, and he picks up the first down. Good move by Wilson. He's 6'6", 205 pounds. Nice young man. Plus, he can run. He's run for 100 yards in the last two games. He scrambled for 100 yards in the last two games. This is one thing the Chiefs are going to have to contend themselves with. They had good coverage in the secondary and good pressure on the quarterback, but there nobody nobody is coming down with him. He picks up a, a big first down when it should have been a 7-8-yard loss. 50-yard line, first down. Raiders lead it, 7-0. Wilson the throw. Marcus Allen. And he is kind of wrestled out of bounds by Albert Lewis. But again, the Raiders able to move offensively, dominating the game both offensively and defensively, even though they lead by only 7 and nothing. And they're doing it with short passes. They're, they're not going deep downfield. I think, and, you know, Charlie, we talked about the rivalries. In, in playing a team twice a year for so many years over the years, you kind of get an idea what they like to do and what they don't like to do. And I think the Raiders at this point are kind of mixing it up. Rather than throwing the ball deep downfield, they're looking for possession and outlet receivers, and that's what Allen was on that pass there. Seven yards to the 43, second and three. Steve Sylvester replaces Charlie Hannon off his guard. Wilson going deep, has his man, Duffy Williams. Williams, the rookie out of UCLA, was in the clear. He got behind to Ron Jarrett. We know sooner they were talking about it, Charlie, about throwing deep possession and then go deep is what he, uh, Mark Wilson did. Doki Williams went down, made a little move like it was going to be a curl or an out. The rookie, Lewis, was held for a second, picked up his feet again, but he overthrew it. Doki Williams from UCLA taken in the fifth round of the draft. Mark Wilson has completed 7 of 13 for 78 yards, including the touchdown pass to Frank Hawkins. Third down three. Go ahead. A baggy of peace. Baggy yeah. of peace. Why not? They had a man open downfield. The bump and run coverage of the Chiefs didn't allow the timing to be right, and that's what caused that sack. Good coverage in the secondary. Ray Guy to kick, and Anthony Hancock is the deep back of the 10 yard line. Key defensive play for the Chiefs because they stopped the Raiders. They were on the move. It was third and three. Now kicking forth the gym goes for the corner on the right side. Fair catch is called for and taken at the 14-yard line. Hang time, 4.3 seconds. So that was a key drive anyway for the Raiders. They started off inside their own 10, and now the Chiefs are going to start inside their 20. Raiders lead it 7-0. 8.55 left to go. First half. The story today on Gary Barbaro, the former Kansas City Chief free safety who has signed with the USFL, but he has been replaced by Deron Cherry. And Cherry this year has six interceptions. He played exceptionally well. The order Brown for Kansas City from the 14 to the 15-yard line, a gain of one. It will be second down and nine. Bob Nelson with the tackle. Today's game is brought to you by Chevrolet, official U.S. cars and Raiders leading the team 7-0. Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City. An overcast day. A bit of a threat of rain. It stayed away. Temperature about 60. Kenny Byer. Good reception, 30 yard line. Gain of 50. Carlos Carson working on Lester Hayes. He looked back inside of Hayes and made the catch. Lester is pleading his cases. Oh, now come on now. He didn't catch that ball. Please, he didn't catch it. I saw it. I had a good look at it. No, he didn't catch it. They Listen took to it. I'm telling you the truth. They took the stick him away. Now you take the catch. <laughs> now he's going to smile. He's going to laugh. All right. You're right. He caught it. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is KCRA TV, Channel 3, Sacramento. Kansas trail 7 0. Just under seven and a half minutes left to go in the first half. Chiefs from the 30 yard line, their own territory. 
Harrison in motion. Getting the throw. Far side is there on target. Henry Marshall. He stepped out at about the 45. Just shy of the 45. Gain of 15. First down. You know, Charlie, nothing comes easy against the Raider defense. They make you work for everything. You know, so often you hear coaches or players say, well, we're going to take what they give us. We're going to take the easy stuff. The Raider defensively do not give you anything easy. You have to work for everything you get. With good pressure on the quarterback and tight coverage in the secondary. Mostly man-to-man, -man, bump and run. Kansas City has looked better in this drive, though. Crisper. Oh, yes. First down, Chiefs their own 45. Here's the draw. Billy Jackson. 49 yard line of Los Angeles. Gain of six, second down four. Ted Watts with the tackle. And Ted Hendricks was also there. We have an official's timeout. Mike Davis, the injured player. Number 36, the strong safety out of Colorado. We'll take a timeout. Clock is stopped. 6.58 left to go. Second quarter, and the Raiders lead it. Seven to nothing. Not had that good a protection. Not until the last couple of series of plays, and they have moved the ball. They have got to protect Kenny to get something done. Second down and four, 49-yard line of Los Angeles. Kenny has completed nine of 15. Billy Jackson. Fighting his way to the 44-yard line, five yards, first down. Needed four, got five, McElroy, and Kenlaw make the tackle. Good, tough running by Billy Jackson. You know, they really, really lost uh, a great deal of their running game when Joe Delaney, an uh, unfortunate death in the offseason, talking to John Makovic, he says his offense will really not be a complete offense until next year when they can go out and get themselves a top flight uh, draft choice or a trade for a top running back. Jackson is good and uh, their offense is, is trying to make through with their running game, but they really need a top flight runner. 44 yard line of the Raiders, first down. Three down out of the backfield of Jackson. Out of bounds, 37 yard line, gain of seven, second and three, Jack Squarek with the tackle. I will say this though for Billy Jackson, he's not the breakaway threat, but he is tough. He'll fight for every yard. He is a tough, durable, hard-nosed runner. He gets every inch he can get, and today he is really carrying the load uh, as far as the rushing is concerned for the Chiefs, and they need it, as we've said. They just can't pass against a team like the Raiders. The Raiders defensively, number three against the pass in the entire NFL. Second down and three. 37-yard line of the Raiders. Raiders lead it 7 nothing. 541 left to go, first down. Second back two is Yoda's trap. They pick up the first down. Reggie Kinlaw, the middle guard, makes the tackle. There's really a third team on the field. First down, as you can see, the third team being the official. And they have all kinds of responsibilities. There's the umpire. He's looking at the defensive, from the defensive side of the ball, behind the linebackers. He is watching for any holding on the offensive line, any head slaps that the defensive line may uh, initiate against their offensive people. But each one of these officials has a certain responsibility, Charlie, and we may be talking about them a little bit more later in the show. And that was John Keck, number 67, the umpire. Just pull down. Howie Long gets the sack. That is the 36th sack of the year for the Raiders. Second quarter score Atlanta 7, New Orleans nothing. Here's a look at the officials. President of Printing Company, a petroleum distributor, county commissioner, hospital administrator, real estate appraiser. The star by Gary Lane, he's a former NFL player, director of marketing, and a high school dean of students. So a diversified background. Second down and 18. Green, right side, Theodos Brown. And Theodos is knocked out around the 37-yard line. Mike Davis, who came out of the ball game just a moment ago, back in to make that play. 
We're going to take another look at it. Ted Hendricks, 83, is covering the back. Back checks Hendricks. Hendricks checking the back. The back says he's not coming, so I'm going to go on out. On a screen situation, Charlie, if the linebacker is blitzes, they usually blitz off of the off of the uh, the screen off of the blitzing linebacker. That time, Hendricks didn't come, so he says, I'm getting out of here. Throw me the ball. Hendricks was lost to the inside. Third down, 14. 37-yard line from the shotgun. Kenny has pressure. Throws. Ricochet incomplete. Carson couldn't hold on to it. Catchable pass. Rod Martin at the cover. Should have been caught. Anderson with a 30-yard field goal. Pittsburgh 20 to 3. Here comes Dallas. Raphael Septien with a field goal. They're coming back. And Nick Luckhart with a 43-yard field goal. Atlanta 10 to 7. Keith Johnson on a one-yard run. Boy, they're killing Houston. Jim Arnold will be kicking. Greg Pruitt at the 10-yard line for the Raiders. seconds in the 30-second clock. Lots of time. Goes for the left-hand corner. And he gets it. He's out about the three-yard line. Now it's up to the Chiefs' defense against the Raiders' offense. And the Raider offense has been very effective deep in their own territory. They have been able to get out and at least give Ray Guy some kicking room. 3 left to go. First half. There goes the ball. Raiders lead it. We go away. We'll be back in a moment. So a key series now for the Chiefs defense. First down for the Raiders. They're all three. They lead by seven. And the swarming defense is there. Kenny King is stopped at the five-yard line. Gain of two. Gary Spaney led the defense along with Mike Bell. So it will be second down and eight. Second and eight, your own five-yard line. You are the Los Angeles Raiders. Do you throw here? Normally you would, but do you throw this deep? Well, I think you throw something safe, Charlie. You don't, just would you, because you drop back the pass doesn't mean it has to be a, uh, something that's not safe. A little pass to the halfback or the tight end is normally a good safe throw. Marcus Allen. That's a good safe handoff, <laughs> and he could figure the first down. In his second year out of the University of Southern California, number one draft choice, Ron Cherry makes the tackle. Raiders were questioned when they picked him as the number one draft choice. He said he wasn't big enough. He wasn't fast enough. What they didn't realize is that he could do everything. He's a great player. He's a good runner and a good receiver out of the backfield. It's interesting to note the Raiders keep running to their left at uh, Bell and Jackson. Jackson, not the biggest of linebackers, and Bell known more for his rushing the passer than he is for his uh, uh, tackles. Uh, still on the other side is lead the team uh, or second in the team on the team every year in tackles. But the Raiders continue running left against the Chiefs. And it is a first down. Key first down for the Raiders. And when the pressure is on, it was second and eight at the five-yard line. They come through. That's been their history. They're big plays, and that's a big play, even though they only picked up eight or nine yards. It's still a big play. If, if they don't make that first down, they have to punt the ball away. The Chiefs get it on the 50-yard line, and then they're breathing down the throat, attacking the goal line. Little play action, first down. Over the middle, pass is complete. 18-yard line to Barnwell, and Strainy drops him in his tracks at the 18. Gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Let's see. He dropped him in his tracks. <laughs> Malcolm says, hey, I'm not used to being over there with those 59 start tackling me. Get me outside with these 23s tackle me. I want those low numbers, the little folks. <laughs> Strainy, 6'2", 228 pounds out of Kansas State. Missed six weeks of the season with a knee injury. Second and six. Raiders from their own 18 is Marcus Allen. To about the 22. So it'll be third down, still a pair. Gary Green, defensive left cornerback, is the man who stopped Marcus. Marcus' long gain of this year, though, is only 19 yards. That's a surprising statistic. You it is. to break a big one. It is. And, Charlie, you think about the great running backs. They all have the speed because you've got to have speed to be able to get somewhere. But they all have good vision. 
You look at Tony Dorsett, and you look at Marcus Allen. They always have those eyes that are popping out of their head. They get good vision and good timing. They see where the holes are, and they get there when they should. We'll be right back. To endure. Touchdown pass to Mark Wilson to Frank Hawkins with the Raiders. That's in the score. Two minutes to go. First half. They're down and two. Wilson throws, and it is incomplete. Todd Christensen, number 46, the intended receiver. Remember the story I started about him about half an hour ago? One of his favorite quotes is, too soon we brush the tape, and too late we find the fun was in the running. I like that. I like that. Too soon we brush the tape, and we forget all about the race and the fun of the running. You got to stop and smell the flowers along the way. That's right. Anthony Hancock is now set to return the kick of Ray Guy. So Kansas City could have good field position. Good hang time. Fair catch. Taken at the 37-yard line. 4.6 seconds, the hang time. So Kansas City will have the ball at their own 37-yard line. That's pretty good field position. 149. Time remaining in the first half. We'll be back in just a moment. Next year, the year after. Who knows? You never know. Kansas City from their own 37-yard line. From the shotgun, first down. Kenny. And the pass is complete. Henry Marshall. Marshall caught it around the 48-yard line. He may have the first down. Lester Hayes and Van McElroy making the tackle. Hurry-up offense for the Chiefs. They've been very successful in their hurry-up offense. Breaks the continuity. Minute 32 seconds left in the half. Mark it at the 47-yard line. It is a first down. Marshall pulled down by Carlos Carson. Back-to-back -back first down. 37-yard line of Los Angeles. 16 yards on the play. Timeout taken by the Kansas City Chiefs. Good execution on the part of the Kansas City Chiefs. Look to the left side of your screen. Kenny looks left all the way. Man-to-man -man coverage. Marshall just beats the cornerback, comes back to the quarter, makes a good catch. Ball is a little high. Watts makes the tackle. Just driving him off. Makes the cut, comes back to the ball. The other play, before this play, was a good play by Marshall also. He had double coverage, good execution by the Chiefs. He hooked between the two receivers, the defensive backs, and came back. Marshall is a big play man for the Kansas City Chiefs to come in. Came into this ball game with 43 receptions, Charlie, and two touchdowns. They need him in their offense. They mark the ball inside the 37-yard line. It is a first down. 114, time remaining first half. Halftime, NFL 83. They'll be updating all the scores and highlights around the NFL this afternoon. And again, congratulations to NFL 83 for breaking the story on Gary Barbaro, former Kansas City Chief, now a free agent who has signed with the USFL. Charlie, I look for the Raiders now. They, this is the furthest penetration the Chiefs have gotten inside the 40-yard line of the Raiders. And I really look for them to do something aggressively. Blitz them, uh, try to double cover some of their people, try to get them out of their temple, rush Kenny. He's had good protection the last two times. Put some pressure on him, either this play or the next play, and see if they can come up with a sack or an interception. When I remember in the first quarter, they got as far as the, as far as the 24-yard line. Then penalties took them out of that and the state. First down, Kansas City has 12. Raiders have nine. But we can forget the stats in reality. The only one that counts is a minute and 14 left to go first half. Is he, he's open it is overthrow. Henry Marshall had a step on Ted Watt. It would have taken a perfect pass, but it was a little too long. Well, you know, I, I'm all for quarterbacks, but uh, he had him open. He could have hit that. The, the defense was they had double coverage on Marshall. They had one man on the inside, one on the outside. Marshall made a fake like he was going to go across the field and drew the inside man up and went deep. But I don't know if his pride is hurt or if he's hurt physically, but that was a big play that could have been six for the Chiefs. And what can happen when you come down as we take a look from the end zone? It can simply knock the wind out of you. That's one thing that can happen. Take a look at number 26 at the top left, McElroy. He's a man that has coverage deep inside. Marshall made a move like he was going across the field. McElroy had that responsibility or coverage, and then Marshall went straight up behind him. The ball should have thrown more to the inside of the field and would have been caught. I couldn't see the injury. But Ted Watts came rolling over the top of him, so 
may have twisted something in the process. We have an injury timeout. That's tough, though, Charlie, with looking at it from a standpoint of a quarterback offense. When you have that opportunity to make a big play, that really wasn't that tough of a throw for Kenny. Should have laid it up a little higher, given him a little more time to run under it, and threw it more to the middle of the field over McElroy's head because he had him beat. He was running away from Watts. Let's take another look at it. Should have thrown it more to the right side behind 26 McElroy and away from Watts. Could have twisted his neck or his head. They're working the kind of toweling off his face right now. We'll try and have a, an official report, of course. Inside of the two-minute mark, he will obviously come out of the ball game. If he doesn't come out, then uh, you're charged with a timeout. Otherwise, it just goes as an injury timeout. But, of course, it's very obvious in this situation that he would be coming out. A little smelling salts, is that it? I think he may have hit his head or get there. See the man on the left? That's Wayne Rudy. We talked about the rivalry that goes back to 1960. Right. Well, Wayne Rudy was the trainer in 1960. He's been with the Chiefs ever since. There aren't too many have been around that long. Tom Flores, as you mentioned, was the quarterback for the Raiders at that time, now the head coach. That's right. The first game that these two teams played preseason, 1960, July 31st, Tom Flores was the quarterback. I broadcast that ball game. It was the first pro game I ever broadcast. And you were a starting quarterback in the 10th grade in high school in Evansville, Indiana? Yeah, I was just a young kid, Charlie. Yeah, I may have even been in grade school. You still are. <laughs> you still are. <laughs> Kansas City has been charged, we are informed, with the timeout because of the injury. Second down and 10. Back at the 36-yard line, Nick Scorch representing the National Football League. He laid that information, so we appreciate that so we can keep you updated on everything that's happening. Second and 10. 109 left to go, first half. Complete. Bumping at the 30-yard line, there was not a flag, and justifiably so, Brown and McKinney and the football all got there at the same time. Good defensive play. They all got there at the same time, and the Raiders were in the perfect coverage. McKinney in the middle of your field, in the middle of the screen, is there just, just for that perfect, specific reason. If anybody comes in the middle of the field, I'm going to go up and hit him because he was free. He could go anywhere he wanted to in the middle of the field. It will take, a, take another look at it. The two linebackers on the outside of your screen are forcing the receiver to the inside. What a vice that was. Third down and 10. 36-yard line, Raiders. 105, now left to go. First half. In the coverage, Mike Davis almost had the interception. Ken Thomas, it's in the receiver. He should have caught it. Should have been intercepted. Should have been intercepted. The reason that ball was so poorly thrown was the pressure on Kenny that time. Give the defensive line the credit for that uh, incompletion. Particularly Howie Long, who was putting the pressure on number 75. And now Nick Lowry will come in with a field goal attempt. His longest in his career, and he had it this year, 58 yards. The line of scrimmage, the 36. This will be uh, from about the 43. Let's see where they set up an attempt of... No, they're going to set up at the 44. An attempt of 54 yards. There, no win. And a chance to pull within four. Kenny is holding. Chance for a fake. I think they'll go for it here. High snap gets it down. As the distance. He's got it. said before the ball game, Charlie, we feel like Nick Lowry is the best at his, especially in the National Football League. <laughs> he still gets excited. He kicks them through there like they're short field goals or extra points, but he still enjoys the game. Raiders seven, Chiefs three. And the last time that they met, Raiders won at 21-20. 
Maui's field goal attempt. The last seconds of the game blocked by Ted Henry. This one is good, seven to three. And Lowry will be kicking off with Greg Pruitt and Ted Watts, the deep backs on the return. Kicking off for Kansas City, Nick Lowry. Check it, it is Clee Montgomery, who is back with Greg Pruitt. Does not start until the ball has been touched in the field of play. 56 seconds left to go in the half. 10 yard line. Here's Troy. To the 20, to the 25, to the 30, to about the 32, maybe the 33 yard line where Ed Beckman makes the tackle. So now the Raiders will move into their two minute offense. Greg Troy on the return. Nick Lowry, we said he had a 58-yarder, his career longest. Well, this is a 54-yarder, his third best, third best. That's ah, only his third best. Plenty of clearance, though. I think that would have been good from 60, Charlie. Maybe 63, the record distance. Tom Dempsey has that. Now, Raiders in their own 32-yard line. Wilson rolling out, going down the sideline. Pass is complete, 49-yard line of Kansas City to Barnwell, and then he was bumped out of bounds. 19 yards on the play, first down. Gary Green had the coverage. That's always a good play in this situation in the ball game late in the half. Sprint out, roll out. It was a design roll out to get him outside the pocket, throw the ball down and out, give your receiver a little bit more time to see if he's getting bounds. Oh, good catch. Perfect sideline catch. Good catch. Kansas City, 49-yard line. First down. Wilson, lots of time. Goes deep. Almost intercepted by Lloyd Burris. Barnwell intended receiver. Burris went up, had it for a moment, couldn't pull it down. 35 seconds left to go, second quarter. Ball game had kind of a herky-jerky start in the first quarter. Second quarter settled in to be a much smoother football game, more interesting, more fun. I, I think the herky-jerky part of it, Charlie, is the fact that the offenses didn't keep the ball very long. It was three or four or five plays and punt or an interception. The defense is dominated. Now the offenses have kept the ball on their drives a little longer. Marcus Allen, the remaining back, three wide receivers in for the Raiders. Second and ten. Far side, flag is down. Allen intended receiver, incomplete on the pass, but the flag was dropped at the 39. There's something interesting we might want to point out while we're talking about flag. Sometime you're watching television, you're in the stands, you might say, hey, that's a late flag. Reality is it's not a late flag. Penalty will go against Kansas City. What happens is that it is a penalty if it's a pass like an illegal and an ineligible lineman downfield. But if they develop into a run, then, of course, it's not. Here's illegal the call. Illegal contact. Defense, Defense number, 24. number 24. First down. And so the officials have to wait to see how the play develops before they can make the call. That's exactly right. Here's a pass protection for the Raiders. Good pocket protection, as we were talking about earlier. See good protection by 66. 65, Mickey Marvin. 44-yard line, first down. Good defensive play. Christensen intended receiver, Lloyd Burris Christian. Injury report on Henry Marshall, who went down in the end zone. Remember, he saw his head go down, the defender roll over the top of him. Marshall has a broken nose. That is the injury report. Second down and 10. Ball at the Kansas City 44-yard line. Raiders lead it 7-3. to three. 26 seconds left to go second quarter. Charlie, to elaborate on that, what you were talking about, the late flag, sometimes if the quarterback goes back to pass, the wide receivers will jam the wide receiver. The, the defensive backs will jam the wide receiver. They can only do it 5 yards. They can do it 10 or 15 yards if the ball is never thrown. If he, comes if he runs play. outside the pocket, or if he scrambles downfield. So the, the, the referee's got to make sure that the ball is actually thrown. Intercepted, Chiefs have the ball. Albert Lloyd. Second is Sherwood Rockmore. 
Rugmore, his third interception of the year. And that is the first turnover by the Raiders. And Rockmore, he's going to keep the football. And Kansas City will have the ball at the 29-yard line of the Raiders. Charlie, the Chiefs have 18 interceptions this year. That's third in the National Football League. Now Rockmore... Now 19 is exactly right. Here we'll see a replay. This is a short pass over the middle. Wilson looking at his man all the way. And when you do that as a quarterback, the defensive backs also see where you're looking. Rockmore was free, scooted in front of him, and made a big play. And it is starting to rain. Kansas City has the ball. Los Angeles 29-yard line. Sideline pass is incomplete. Tim Thomas, the intended receiver. That stops the clock. Ten seconds. Do you go with a field goal attempt now? Do you throw once more? I think you can throw one more time, Charlie. You've got to complete it and call timeout. A lot of times as a quarterback, what you would do is alert the referee that if this ball is complete or if we run it, as soon as the play is over with, I'm going to call timeout. So he'll be looking for you and you'll be looking for him. Time remaining, first half, 10 seconds. Nick Lowry just had a 54-yard successful field goal. And this time, they're not going to wait. From the 38, an attempt to 48 yards. Case is a bad snap. They still have another opportunity. No reason to take a chance. Good snap. He's got it. From 54. And now from 48. And the Chiefs pull within one with six seconds left to go in the first half. So only 50 seconds, 5-0, separate the two field goal attempts by Nick Lowry. Bill Kenny is the holder, gets it down in good shape. Boy, it takes a, a big load off of your offense if you got a kicker that can put it through there from outside the 40-yard line. There's War Payne going in for a little... Uh, Halftime refreshment. <laughs> he says, he says, I could use a little more exercise, though. I'm sure these Chiefs score a little bit more. He'd love to run around a little more. But in reality, you can uh, credit th those three points to the defense. The interception, Derwood Rockmore. And that's what set it up. Now Flores can't be very happy with his offense again turning the ball over. Played the entire first half without turning it over. Interception immediately leads to three points. Let me ask you something. Do you gamble here with an onside stick and a long field goal attempt? Six seconds left to go. You fold within one. Or do you try and go in the halftime into the locker room? I think they're trailer? satisfied just going in. Well, it was just a thought. Here's Lee Montgomery on the return. 25. Pops it to the 30. You're around the 36-yard line on the return. But with that play, time has run out in the first half. Dean Prater makes the tackle for the Kansas City Chiefs. So, the Raiders are out in front by a score of 7 or nothing at the end of the first quarter. Then the two field goals within 50 seconds of each other by Nick Lowry. We've got a ball game. Interesting second half coming up. It is Los Angeles 7 and Kansas City 6. 34 set for the return of the Raiders as we open the second half with Los Angeles leading 7 to 7. Six yard line, Troy. Greg to the 15, 20. To the 26 yard line. 20 yards on the return. Albert Lewis makes the tackle. Now let's look at the statistics in the first half. Not much difference in uh, rushing or passing yardage. Total yardage about the same. Turnovers are even. Hey, it's a pretty even ball game. Time of possession is a little bit in favor of the Chiefs, but the real story is the lack of offense by either team and the dominant play of the defense, and it doesn't seem to, to, to it's going to get any better, Charlie, with the amount of uh, rain that's falling here. It's got to be a plus for the defense. The Raiders from their own 26-yard line. Wilson opens up with a little play action slip, and the pass is incomplete at the 40-yard line. Lloyd Burroughs for the defense. Calvin Muhammad for the offense, and the flag is dropped. Lloyd Burris came in and just leveled Calvin Muhammad. Flag was thrown. The 
discussion there. I'm sure it's going to be whether or not it was up around the head, an intentional foul around the helmet and the head area. This is one thing, Charlie, I think that's good. The officials have done over the years, last couple of years, is if there's any question or any doubt, they'll get together and they'll ask each other, what did you see? The flag will be picked up. There was no foul on the play. Instead of one man making the call, if three or four officials see the play and see it very well, they'll hold a conference and they'll decide from themselves, what did you see? I saw this, I saw that. And then they decide that, no, it was not a foul. And they'll pick it up, which is good. Rather to be, rather to pick them up than to be wrong and leave it, to leave it play. Offensively for the Raiders, Wilson, Allen, and King in the backfield. Christensen tight end. Muhammad and Barnwell, the wide receivers. Rain is falling. It's complete to Todd Christensen. The tight end out of bounds at about the 49-yard line. 23 yards on the play. First down, Lloyd Burris for the defense. Had single coverage on Christensen that time. Blitz the situation that the Chiefs defense has come out and is going after the offense. They want to be the aggressor on this field, and they're trying to do it and stop the Raiders. That time, the Raiders caught them in single coverage. Raiders offensive line, Davis, Sylvester replacing Hannah, Dalby at center, Marvin and Lawrence. Los Angeles at their own 49-yard line, first down. Very quickly on the move from their own 26. They want to throw. It is Allen. And the Chiefs have the ball. Gary Spaney makes the play. Well, they rule an incomplete pass. What are they going to say? What do you say? Quick call. <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> I say somebody down there is still fighting for the ball. going to spot it at the 39-yard line. I think the Raiders recovered it. I think he ruled it as a fumble, and the Raiders recovered it. Allen may have gotten the ball back, Charlie. They're going to spot it just outside the 38-yard line. John Makovic's going to get ulcers on the sideline if he doesn't stop getting so excited. He does stay calm. <laughs> Loss of 10. Second and 20, five men in the secondary. Here comes Marcus Allen in the ring. To about the 43, maybe the 44. We'll give him five and call it third down 15. Charlie, you mentioned the rain. You know, a lot of people ask, how difficult is it to throw a football in the rain? I'm sure Mark Wilson, being 6'6", has big hands. He can throw that ball pretty well, as we'll see the end of this play. Oh, it is getting slippery. A, getting a little slippery. <laughs> but in practice, sometimes the, the coaches would e I, I even dunk the balls in, in water and have the quarterback throw just to get used to a wet football. Third down, 15, shot Kansas City. Hart still got the shot. Second of the ball game for the Chiefs. Ray Guy will be kicking. There's the rain and the slippery field either team is it an advantage to either team well, some people say it helps the wide receiver because he knows where he's going and the defensive back doesn't so therefore he can kind of take his take his routes very cautiously but i think that is true but on the other side of the coin it's tougher to throw the football for the quarterback and you don't throw it as accurately great guy kicking to anthony hancock flag is down slices off the side of his foot goes out of bounds but there was a marker on the play. It was fourth down and 19 officially. Raiders offsides. That will be refused. Kansas City will take the football, I'm sure. Bob Frederick, the referee. Number 23 on the offense was offside. The penalty will be refused. Offsides against the Raiders. Otis McKinney on the kicking team. Kansas City has the ball on their own 29-yard line. Charlie, it's got to be tough for an offense such as the Chiefs, who rely so heavily on the pass, and not to have a running game when it's raining. But this is, this is what... They chose him. This is the way they play, and I'm sure they've thrown in the rain quite often. They do not practice on this field. They practice on a grass field. 
about half a mile from here. Play action by Kenny has time throws. Caught by Anthony Hancock. 48 yard line. 19 yards. First down. Ted Watts had the coverage for the Raiders. This is good execution as you see at the top. A little play action. Hancock with a great speed at the bottom left of your screen runs out of it. Will come back into this. Kenny throws the ball. Hancock made Watts think he was going deep. Hancock comes back for the ball and makes the reception. Good first down call. City at their own 48-yard line. First down. Raiders lead it 7-6. For almost three minutes into the second half. Billy Jackson. Jackson slipped as he made his cut at the 44-yard line. Gain of four. Second down six. It'll be longer than that. It was the Kansas City 48. So it'll be gain of about eight. The Otis Brown with the key block as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Eleven forty-six and counting. Time remaining. Third quarter. This is Charlie Jones, Bob Greasy, Arrowhead Stadium. Raiders out in front by one point. Kansas City at the Los Angeles forty-four yard line. Second down and two. That last play good for eight yards. Kenny goes deep over the middle. Carson has it to the twenty, to the fifteen. Ten. Ball is loose. Raiders recover it. And it is a turnover. Los Angeles has the ball. Ted Watts comes up with a fumble recovery. I think that was Lester Hayes who came in from behind and stripped the ball away from the receiver. Was it Hayes or was it Mike Davis? Now there's a conference being the officials are going to call it back. Was there a flag that I missed? There is a flag. Now, Ted Watts had an interception call back on a penalty. They're bringing it back, Charlie. It would have to we, be against the Raiders, or we, else they would let the play stand. If, uh, with a wide shot, we've got the Raiders' offense and the Chiefs' defense down at the five-yard line. We've got, at the 45, we've got some <laughs> Kansas City. Look at that. There you can see. It's like two games going on. And in the end zone is the Raider offense. Offensive holding, number 72, and it will be refused. Offensive holding on David Luce, obviously refused. Jed Watts has the fumble recovery, and the Raiders have the ball at their own two-yard line. Big turnover. We'll be back in a moment. Back to the fumble, Carlos Carson. That's right, it's Mike Davis, a good play, intentionally knocks the ball out of his hands. Marshall did not see him coming up from behind. Ted Watts recovers the fumble. Raiders have the ball at their own two-yard line. Even though the crowd reaction is against the call, it was a good call. The crowd likes this better. <laughs> Marcus Allen is stopped. Mike Bell and Thomas Howard were there for Kansas City. The Chiefs uh, offense obviously moving the ball very well until that fumble by Carlos, Carlos Carson. Carson. Kenny throwing the ball very well. It's uh, obvious that uh, he can throw the ball whether it's dry or wet. Again, Charlie, the Chiefs have the Raiders backed up in their own territory. They need to make some first downs to get some breathing room. Second and nine. Marcus Allen, maybe a yard, it'll be third down and eight. You can see the umbrellas around. It's kind of a drizzling rain. Getting to slack up just a little bit. Jerry Blanton defensively for the Chiefs on the last play. It's a good look at Sylvester, 66, pulling for Marcus Allen. Allen sees a hole into the inside, cuts up. Not much there. It's a tough call right here, Charlie. Back in your own end zone, third and eight. It's a wet ball. It's raining. Tough defense. What do you like? What would you call it? I'd like to go take a shower right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for the play to come in from the bench. I'd, I'd go with my tight end. That's number 46, Todd Christensen. Three seconds on the 30-second clock. One second. 
That'll cost them the lay of game. Did it go? No, they may have got it off just in time. I believe that the officials are going to, the flags are now in the air. I believe it's going to be a 30-second violation. And it's going to be called by the field judge because he was looking back over the offense right at the clock, and that's the call. Yes, good call. The the officials field, doing good ball, doing a good game. Good they job. are, Charlie. The field judge is the man responsible for the for the 30-second clock, so he controls it. Delay on the offense. Third down. So the reality is it's third down and about 10. Also is reality. Basically, you have the same play, same situation. Same situation. You wonder what they're going to do. A few months, a few weeks ago, maybe five or six weeks ago, Jim Puckett called a pass to Cliff Branch in this situation for 99 yards and a touchdown. And Branch hasn't been back in the ball game since. And Puckett is not the quarterback. He's been replaced by Mark Wilson. That's right, Branch pulled a hamstring on that play against Dallas. It was play action. Marcus Allen. Allen all alone has the first down. Great play for Los Angeles. And Wilson just standing all alone. That pocket protection by the offensive line of the Raiders. That is the key to the play. You saw the play before. They showed the Kansas City Chiefs are going to run. They run a little play action. Chiefs think they're going to run again. That's a good safe call. Get it to a man that can make something happen. He picks up a first down. You saw Jerry Blanton's disgusted reaction. Now they got to go back and play defense and stop him again. A gain of 19 yards to the 21-yard line. Los Angeles in their own territory. Just over nine minutes left to go in the third. Here's Marcus Allen. Met at the line of scrimmage with Jerry Blanton and Art Still. Charlie, we have an update on the score. James Winder, a 75-yard run. Tampa Bay leads Minnesota 14-9 the third quarter. Here are the score. Los Angeles 7, Kansas City 6. The Raiders at their own 21-yard line, second down and 10. Wouldn't that be a shocker if the Buccaneers beat uh, the Vikings? That would be. I mean, that really would be. Six men in the secondary for the Chiefs. They look for Wilson to throw. Sideline pattern. Barnwell, and he has it. They're going to spot it around the 32-yard line. And there was a marker drop back at the 17, and it's going to go against the Raiders. So a costly penalty. That play would have picked up the first down. Anytime you see the quarterback and the offensive uh, team walking back, you know it's going to be against them, and probably it's going to be uh, accepted by the defensive team. Offensive holding, number 65. Holding on Mickey Marvin. Penalties relatively low. It's not a lot for uh, these two teams. These two teams have been penalized quite a bit this year. Second and 20. Marcus Allen. Give him a yard and a half, maybe two. Are you surprised at that call? Well, obviously they had thought going into the ball game that they had something running to the left side. We saw them running very well the left side to be in the first half. I think it's time to start throwing. You didn't have to pick up the entire amount, but I think they're being a little bit conservative at this point. And maybe rightfully so. They've got a good kicker. Kick it away. Let their defense uh, come on the field and stop them. A gain of a couple. Third down and 18. Raiders at their own 13-yard line. Inside handoff. One in defense. Frank Hawkins dropped for a lot. Dean Prater led the way for the Chiefs. surprising, Charlie, to see the Raiders playing really conservative two or three times in a row. They did throw that one pass out of their own end zone to get them a first down, then they had the holding call, but they're really playing it very close to the vest down in their own uh, end of the territory, and it's, it's unusual for the Raiders to do that. I don't know whether it's because of Wilson being in there or the fact that uh, uh, they haven't been playing well offensively, but they turned the ball over a lot the last few weeks, too. Anthony Hancock just to return the kick. Chiefs will have excellent field position. Fair catch is called for. 
flag is down because Hancock was hit. It'll be fair catch interference. Once he goes up with a fair catch, he has a right to get to the football. Whether you see him or not is immaterial. You have to know where the ball is in the air. James Davis was down for the Raiders on the coverage. I don't know, Charlie. They may rule he was blocked into the man. There was some discussion over there. Whether the he bumped another chief. There was no foul. As the man was blocked into the receiver. He was blocked into the receiver. There was no foul. That's the call. We'll see it right here. He was. Good call again by the official. Hancock did a good job of getting away from that ball so it wouldn't be a rule to fumble. Lucia Smith blocking James Davis into Anthony Hancock. We've got a timeout. We'll be back. This was being blocked into Anthony Hancock. What did the ball do? Well, it went out of bounds at the 50-yard line. That's the line of scrimmage. An opportunity for the Kansas City here. They got good field position, Charlie. 50-yard line. It's a good down the throw. You go deep immediately. I think you've got to go for a big play. It looks like the Raiders are committed in the secondary. Man coverage may be a good time. Terrible play. Well, it was terrible, Charlie, because they were in a blitzing situation and there, there, there was nobody, uh, no running uh, lanes to go. Here we have Steve Grogan to uh, Clarence Weathers with a 58-yard touchdown pass. It's New England 21. Dallas is coming back. Tony Darsett on a 29-yard run. They lead 20 to 10. Cincinnati Bengals. Stanley Wilson, a one-yard run, 41 to nothing. Loss of three on the last play. It'll be second down and 13 here. <laughs> Kenny drills this one incomplete. He was going to Hancock. And he missed him inside. And he missed him by maybe a yard. Let's go to New York City for an update. Look, what do we see? Is this because Plunkett is uh, the veteran can throw in the, uh, in the rain? That might be the reason? It might be, and the offense is not doing anything. They've got another veteran quarterback. Put him in. Third down, 13. I want to call it a screen, but I'm not sure that it was. <laughs> I'm not so sure that Thomas wanted to catch that ball. Otis Brown, uh, the intended receiver, but it didn't look as though he was really anxious to catch that ball. There was a man out there with him, a defensive man. Again, the Raider defense stops the Chiefs, forces him to punt. Jim Arnold will be kicking to Greg Pruitt. So the Chiefs had an opportunity, first down at their own 50-yard line. Three plays, they lost three yards. Fourth and 13. So the Raiders defense dominating that series. Fair catch is taken at about the 10 yard line. Hang time, 4.3 seconds. Five minutes, 46 seconds. That is the time remaining in the third quarter. A 43 yard kick. The Raiders have the football. They have the lead, 7 to 6. And we have a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. The Raiders, they have a first down at their own 10 yard line. Marcus Allen has three yards to the 13. Art still makes the tackle. It'll be second down and seven. In this situation, now Mark Wilson calling most of his own plays, though, but in this situation, in the rain, would he get more plays from the bench than normally? Well, during the timeout, Charlie, he was standing on the sideline talking with Tom Flores, and I'm sure they were talking about five or six different plays. Wilson can call him in the routine and in the manner that he wants to. He may have given him some ideas, but Wilson is picking him out, and he's got some direction from Tom Flores. Second down, seven. Lots of time, and then time runs out. And Art still has his second sack of the ball game. We have the Chiefs with their third sack. And they didn't have that many coming into the game. They had 17. The Raiders had 35, and they have added one. No, officially, it's the fourth sack. Chiefs were 24th in the National Football League in sacks, and they're really they're getting the sacks today, Charlie, because the coverage in the secondary has been so good that Wilson is holding the ball and allows the rush to get to him. 
And a loss of four on the fourth sack, so it is third down and 11. You look for Marcus Allen coming out of the backfield, left flat, like before. A good possibility on Christensen, 46. Listen, Look the end out. zone is to get him at the safety. He runs out, and he goes out of bounds. Oh, just a step away from a Chiefs lead. <laughs> Woo. Wilson's over there breathing <laughs> awfully hard right now. In a one-point game, especially in bad weather like we're having here uh, today, two points means a, means a lot. Right this was, there. This was a designed rollout. Supposed to be a little bit more blocking out there than it was. Wilson now just wants to get out of the end zone, get upfield, and let his team come in and punt. And he got away from Mike Bell, number 99, defensive right end. And so Ray Guy is kicking to Anthony Hancock. And we had the same situation a moment ago. Chiefs with the ball in the 53 place. They lost three. So good field position against the Raider defense is not all of that much. for Ray Guy. Here we'll take another look at it. It comes from up the middle. Here you see Cherry, but the problem comes when Hawkins moves out of the middle and everybody on the Kansas City team came right up the middle. There was no way Guy could kick the ball. We will take another look at it. And if we could hold that, maybe go back just a little further. I believe it was Steve Potter, number 58. When Ray Guy looked, he saw five red jerseys. Now Kansas City the Los Angeles eight-yard line, first and goal. A mix-up. No, oh, the pass is to Chris Jackson. One-yard line. Was that a mix-up or a planned mix-up? No, that was a planned play. There, It's an influence on the defensive end. He got sacked a little bit earlier in the ball game. But that man, that defensive end, the quarterback just has to get away from it. If they don't fool him on the sweep fake to the right side, if he comes back and, and the defensive end is still there, the quarterback has got to avoid him. Tell me what you mean by influence. Influence, usually, Charlie, if you if you block a man on his on his right side, the ball is going that way. But if you block him on his right side, he's going to fight the pressure. And if you run to his left, that's an influence block. He doesn't think it's going that way. Billy Jackson does not get in. Bill Pakel and Van McElroy for the defense. Charlie, this is where the lack of a strong running game really comes into play and will really hurt an offensive team. Kansas City, without the great runners, without the big blocking back, the big guy that can run it in like a Riggins, is really going to hurt to try and get the ball in. They may have to throw it in the end zone to get it in there. That's it. The long yard. last week, one yard line, three opportunities. They couldn't do it. Can they do it against the Raiders? 75,497 fans want to know the answer. The flag is down. The Otis Brown does not get into the end zone. There was a marker on the play. McElroy and Watts for the defense. Rod Martin was also there. If you can't run up the middle, try running around the end. Spread them out. Try to spread them out. The defense just wants to stay in their lanes. Keep spread out and then help out. When he tries to make his move to go across, that was just good team defense by the Raiders. The penalty, half the distance against the Raiders. The down will go over. Here's the call. Defense, offside, number 74. Third down, will be repeated. Archie Reese, offside. Third down goal to go half a yard. You can't get it inside. You don't get it outside. Do you, do you dare throw from a half a yard away? Well, if you don't make it, you got to kick the field goal. Uh, if you don't, if you look at it two ways. One, if you got two downs to run it in. If you feel like you can run it, they haven't run it in the first two. And if, you, if you're going to throw it, you're probably going to kick the field goal on fourth down. It's a run. Brown. 
Touchdown. Listen to the crowd. everybody wide, stretch them wide, and then try to bust up inside. The same exact play as we saw before. Billy Different Jackson results. with a block. Right there. He does clear the way. Twelve seven. here's the extra point attempt. But you can credit that touchdown to the special team of the Chiefs breaking through and Ray Guy wanted a kick. It's good. Time. Here's the touchdown, Theotis Brown. Kansas City has the lead, 13 to 7, 237 left to go. We're in the third quarter. We'll be back with the kickoff. Third Kansas City has the lead for the first time, 13-7. Nick Lowry kicking off either Greg Pruitt or Clee Montgomery. line. Troy pops it up the middle. A flag is down. He returns outside the 33-yard line. But a flag was dropped at the 25. Lawrence Ricks makes the tackle for the Chiefs. Tackled by Lawrence Ricks. It'll be an illegal use of the hands or holding against the Raiders. Now, what set up the touchdown? Remember, Ray Guy was getting ready to kick, and tremendous pressure from the inside. When he looks, you can see from the right side of the screen, look at all the pressure from the inside, led by Steve Potter, number 58. Charlie, there was no way he could punt this ball. The Raiders have been victimized with 28 turnovers by their offense in the last five games, three of, three of which have they have lost. And today, it's another mistake by the special team. And now, Jim Plunkett is the quarterback for the Raiders. L.A.'s ball at their own 15-yard line. 2.27 left to go in the third. Chiefs have the lead, 13-7. He's checking off, and he can't get the word out to all of his players because of the fans. Marcus Allen. He may lose a yard. Thomas Howard makes a tackle. You know, Charlie, a lot of times the, the quarterback will say in the huddle, I'm going to call this player or that player. I'll call toss 38 or toss 39. Check with me on the ball. He'll go to the ball, and he'll tell him which way he's going to, to uh, run the play. If he says an even number, they may go to the right. If he says an odd number, they may go to the left. But he's got to be able to get that even number out to let the offense know which way, and he can't even do that. Second down. Ten yards, no gain on the last play. Second and ten. Hawkins. And Frank will pick up maybe six. There was a flag drop back at the 16-yard line. It is against Kansas City. It will carry an automatic first down. Now what you see here is the Chiefs defense by committing that penalty is helping Bucket and the Raider offense get something going, get something established. the ball at the 26. First down. Ken Fuzzy Kramer called for defensive holding. There's Mark Wilson on the right, in the rain, and on the sideline. He's got to be frustrated. He's had an opportunity for almost three quarters to move it, and he hasn't. Plunkett should be in the ballgame. Let's see if he can do something. He's a better. As time goes deep, has a man open, and he hits him. It is Calvin Muhammad on a big play for the Raiders. How many 
times cover. have you seen this, Charlie? How many times have you seen Jim Plunkett with a little play action, cocks that arm in a, in a the different way that Jim throws the ball, good play action. He waits and waits and waits, can still get the ball out there. Muhammad behind the man. I'll tell you what, big play is written all over that Oakland offense, that L.A. Uh, offense, and, and Plunkett can make it happen. 45 yards on the play to the Kansas City 29 officially, just inside the 30. First down, one minute left to go in the third. Raiders trail, 13-7. They're on the move. Fake of an inside handoff. Give to Marcus Allen. Art still makes the tackle. A gate of one, maybe two yards on the play. Let's call it second down and eight. Well, you know, a lot of times a change in quarterbacks can really motivate the offensive team. And it doesn't have to be any big plays. The first few plays that Plunkett ran, he ran the same plays that Wilson was calling. But somehow or other, they gained a little bit more yardage. And then he goes for his big play and makes it. Changing quarterbacks sometimes can motivate a ball club to get it going. Tom Floyd saw it and went to it. Number 85, the rookie, Doki Williams, UCLA, just coming into the game. Wide receiver, far side. He came in with the play. Plunkett has to scramble, wants to throw. No, sits out of bounds. And then he's put and slides into the far side. Flag is going to go down for that pushing outside of the field of play. Now, what he, he was looking for, Doki Williams, he was running a fly pattern straight down that left side. He was well covered, too. You know, there's no excuse for a defensive man to push the quarterback once he gets to the sideline and out of bounds. Well, you know, John Makovic said it, the head coach of the Chiefs, after the penalties last week against Denver. So we looked at the film. The penalties were all there. We have to play within the rules. I think it's just, I think it's just a, a, a part of the, of the youth on the Kansas City team. They're undisciplined in some areas, and they just can't make mistakes that are going to help the other team. Personal foul. A late hit out of bounds from the defense. There's no question that that should be called. If you let them start getting away with that, they're going to get away with a lot more. The penalty takes the ball to the 14-yard line. First down. It was number 51, Charles Jackson, that drew the penalty. Now, what has happened, the Kansas City defense has helped Plunkett and the Raider offense move down the field. Plunkett's really not that good a scrambler. Goes high, pulled down, knocked out of bounds. It'll be a touchdown, yes. Good play, Calvin Muhammad. Catches the touchdown pass. I'm not sure that it would have been a touchdown if he would have come, if they would have left him alone. But if he's in the air and hit and drives him out of bounds, has to be. Now the officials are going, are they going to reverse it? They're going to talk about it for a second, but what you're saying, Charlie, if the impetus of the defensive man pushes him out of bounds, it's a good catch. It is ruled as an incomplete pass because the man receiving the pass did not hold the ball when he came down. That's exactly right. You have to catch the ball in the end zone, going through the back of the end zone. Not only do you have to have your feet in bounds, but if you hit outside, you have to hold on to the football. That's not true on the sideline. On the sideline, you can drop the ball. There it is, one foot and then hit out of bounds. He but, has to hold the ball when he hits the ground. And he did not hold on to the ball. It popped loose, you could see it. Perfect coverage by our NBC cameraman. Great job, and on that play, the third quarter comes to a close. That's the end of the third quarter. Kansas City 13, Raiders 7. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Pluck it. Pluck it to the 10 and goes sliding to the 9-yard line. So he picks up 5. It'll be third down and 5. There's an injury report on Mark Wilson. He has a bruised left shoulder and will not return. Who would be the third quarterback? The third quarterback, should, should Pluck it go down, is Ray Guy the kicker. You don't seem too thrilled by that tidbit of information. <laughs> <laughs> not when you have to have a punter play quarterback for you. <laughs> Third down five. Big play here, Charlie. <laughs> to the five-yard line, Marcus Allen. And if that's where they mark it, it will be fourth and one. 
Now you trail by six. You trail by two field goals. Fourth down and one. Do you go for the three? Do you go for the one? Well, they say on the road you play for the tie. At home you play for the win. Fourth down and one. They also say if you can't make one yard on fourth down, you don't deserve to win. There are a lot of things that are said. The realities of it is here we go. No, we're going to talk it over. Tom Flores wants a timeout. Didn't like the play that he had sent in. Wants to come over and talk about it a little bit and see what they're doing defensively. And while they talk about it, we'll take a timeout. 13:37 left in the game. We'll be back. Talking about. They're talking about what they've seen in the preparation this week as far as the Chiefs' defensive alignment on goal line and short yardage situations. They went over everything, and this is the best play they could come up with coming up right here. Running backs are Marcus Allen and Frank Hawkins. And it is Hawkins, and he has the first down. Who is Frank Hawkins? Everybody Frank seems Hawkins to forget ball. about it. He has scored the Raiders' touchdown in the game. He's out of the University of Nevada at Reno, number 27. A tenth round draft choice. He's in his third year. He's a fine player, too. He He's been a situation player for the Raiders. Everybody's been keying on Marcus Allen. And Hawkins has really played very well. Gained over 100 yards against Dallas uh, uh, a few weeks ago. He's been a fine player for the Raiders. Remember this drive? It started back at the Los Angeles 15-yard line. Big play was a 45-yard pass for Bluckett. Hawkins this by inside. His momentum carries him to the one. It'll be second down goal to go. The defense hit him right at the line of scrimmage, but his momentum took Gary Spaney and the rest of the Chiefs to the one. Good line charge by the Raiders. Hitting hard up the middle. <laughs> Jerry says, I got a hold of him. Now I need some help. Come on, help me. Hang on to the cavalry. Gets That's here. exactly right. Second down goal to go. Hawkins would he be the lead blocker? Marcus Allen, the ball carrier. That's what they do. And Marcus Allen has the touchdown. That is his sixth touchdown of the year. And we now have a tie. 13 with the extra point to come. Just straight ahead blocking on the offensive line. Marcus Allen gets the ball deep in the backfield so he can see where he's going. And all he's supposed to do is find a crack, find a hole, lower your head, and get in there for a half a yard. Good execution and a good play. 12-18 left to go in the ball game. There's the man that did it, Jim Plunkett, the catalyst. 85 yards and 11 plays. The extra point is good. And the Raiders have the lead 14 to 13. Shades of the last time they met a month ago. The final was Raiders 21 20. They now lead by one. 12 18 left to go in the game. We'll be back. Bill Kenny. The change from Mark Wilson to Jim Plunkett, although Wilson does have a bruised left shoulder, there's the touchdown drive. We're seeing more and more quarterback changes. In the AFC this year, there have been nine quarterback changes, 19 of the 14 in the American Football Conference. I think that is, Charlie, because you don't have the veteran dominant quarterbacks around the league like you used to. Or if you do have them, they're hurt, like the Terry Bradshaw. Here's Billy Jackson. And he goes out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Bouts is another one that's injured. Now, today's game is being brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth. And here, the Raiders lead the Chiefs 14 to 13. Second down and set. Drill, far side, caught first down. 41-yard line, gain of 11. Now let's go to the scores that we were talking about. Stephon Page, the receiver. Look at that. Pittsburgh 26, their defense continues to dominate. This is surprising to me. New England at home beating Buffalo, shutting him out for the second time in three weeks. Dallas it's always a big game. <laughs> Dallas coming back. Always but again, coming they back. start from behind. What were they down, like 10 nothing? Green Bay's offense showed up. You never know with them if they're going to be there or not. Bum Phillips got the uh, New Orleans Saints back. 41-yard line. Little play action with first down. 
One on one, deep coverage overthrown. Really, Ted Watts had a better chance for an interception than Anthony Hancock did for a completion. Well, he had good cover. He had man-to-man -man coverage. There was nobody in the middle of the field, so it was Watts one-on-one, -on -one, but Kenny threw it too far downfield. Cincinnati, 48 Houston. points. Houston's going for the number one draft choice, I think, Charlie. I think they may have a lot. One, but Kenny threw it too far downfield. Cincinnati, 48 Houston. points. Houston's going for the number one draft choice, I think, Charlie. I think they may have a lock on. <laughs> well, no, they'll be. Uh, you look at this. That's right, Tampa Bay may lose the number one draft choice. Benny Ricardo with a field goal for Minnesota, 17 12. Here we have second down and 10. Grizzling harder. Billy Jackson. Jackson gets around the corner. Good balance on the footage because the turf is very slippery now. Mike Davis, strong safety. The man who bumped him out. There was only a 30% chance of rain today, but I guess the 30% was at Arrowhead. 30% is right above us. We have 11 minutes to go in the ball game, and the Chiefs need to get a drive going at least where Nick Lowry can get in field goal range, but this game may go down to whoever has the ball last, Charlie, because they both have excellent field goal kickers, and Lowry, of course, is probably the best in the league. Kansas City is always in the ball game with their pass offense and their field goal kicker. 11 minutes and 9 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. We're down four. And he throws past the complete first down, 40-yard line of Los Angeles. Ed Beckman, the tight end cutter. And James Davis makes the stop for Los Angeles. Probably one of the more unlikely receivers on a third and possession situation is Ed Beckman. Kenny stands in there well. He has to wait. It's tight coverage. He moves around in the pocket, which is important. And Beckman comes up with a big uh, third down completion. First down, 40-yard line. Beckman, a free agent in his seventh year. Played his collegiate ball at Florida State. Only had seven receptions on the year coming to this game. Little play action that's fooling by the screen. Far side. Oh. oh. Billy Jackson caught it, and then Rod Martin caught him. Interesting thing about Rod Martin, he's number 53. Ted Hendricks is number 83. Ted Hendricks is 6'7", now 255. And you notice him from a quarterback standpoint. Tell me the difference in the two linebackers. As a quarterback, Charlie, coming up the line of scrimmage, Hendricks was always the one that got your attention. He's 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, he's moving around. He's always smiling at you. And those long arms, he'll always reach you. But it's it's Martin, the other one, 53, that will get you a lot of times. You watch out for Hendricks, and Martin is a guy that sneaks in there and gets you. I love that. You're over here with the big guy and the little guy grabs you. Exactly. Loss of four, second and 14, 44 yard line. Raider territory. Incomplete. Jackson intended receiver. Bill Pakel dropping the quarterback, Bill Kenny. He was putting the pressure on him. It'll be third down 14. Good pressure by Pakel, and he really didn't have any more time to wait. Kenny was just getting rid of the ball and hoping for a completion at the worst as an incompletion. This is a big down now, third and 13 yards. Be interesting to see what the Raiders do, whether they try coverage or whether they try to pressure with a blitz. Raiders with two rookies as backups in the defensive line. Greg Townsend from TCU and Bill Pakel from Rutgers. Taking in the second round of the draft. He's a good one, number 71. Third down, 14. the first down, J.T. Smith, and then he spun and picked up the first down. Big play, 19 yards, he needed 14, he got it plus five. Kenny, you see in the pocket with lots of time because they dropped off in a zone, Kenny waits until Smith gets in between the two defensive backs, drills it in there, that's a big first down and a good play for Bill Kenny. 26-yard line of Los Angeles. 8.51 and counting, time remaining. In the ballgame. 
Raiders lead by one. And Nick Lowry has field goals, successful field goals, of 54 and 48 yards. That was in the first half, though. Right at the end of the first half. Little play action pump fake goes right deep. Has a man. Good coverage. Excellent defensive coverage by Lester Hayes. Anthony Hancock, the intended receiver. Bill Kenny slaps his hands together and shakes his head because he knows he had his man open for a minute. But Lester the molester gets back there with his good speed. Oh, isn't that a great defensive play? Great defensive play. Well, I think the ball actually hit him, but Lester was right there with his hands blocking the vision. Good play by Lester Hayes. We'll take another look at it. But he was open if the ball just didn't needed to get there a little bit quicker. Second and 10, 26 yard line of the Raiders. That play was designed to fool Lester Hayes because it was a fake away from him. He threw the, he faked the Tigers to throw away from him in play action. Lester looks into the backfield and tried to sneak a man out behind him, but uh, not, not that time. Second and 10. Over the middle, not sure. Another good defensive play. This one by Van McElroy. Now the Raiders, with one interception in the ballgame, Lester Hayes had that, only have 10 interceptions on the year. But they must have 100 plays like that. Well, they, that are very catchable balls that are knocked away. Very tight coverage. They were in a blitz coverage that time. The time before it was zoned, now they're changing up and blitzing him. McElroy up with tight coverage. McElroy, only a second-year player, Charlie, with four interceptions, and uh, is really playing that as well as anybody. Makovic says he's one of the best in the uh, entire NFL. Third down 10, 26-yard line. Person to the five, to the three-yard line. Carlos Carson, listen to this crowd go crazy. situation. First down goal to go. Two yard line. A gain of 24 yards. Knocked away. Ted Hendricks was there. It'll be second down goal to go at the two. I'm surprised they did not run. I really am. Trying to throw around that man right there is like trying to throw around an octopus. <laughs> Sprint out is a good call. Hendricks trying to keep outside containment, not trying to let anybody outside of him. Look good vision. <laughs> Look at that. That's like a tree trunk, if you ask me, sticking that arm up there like that. Man loves to play the game. Ted Hendricks been playing a long time. In his 15th year. Had, this is his 209th consecutive game. Longest streak among active players here. He hasn't missed a game since the 10th grade. <laughs> he was the quarterback of the 10th grade. When he came back after the injury, they made him a tight end offensively and a defensive end in high school. Out of bounds. And he'll lose a yard. Mike Davis, strong safety, was there for the Raiders. Nothing there. They were trying to work on uh, Mike Davis outside. Now we've coverage seen, by Davis. We've seen a pair of sprint outs. Again, the signature to those two plays or the caption is that they do not have a running game. Well, that play was not a design rollout. He dropped back the pass when the man was covered. He took over there, took off that way to make it a short throw. This time you really got a problem. What do you do here? You, you got to go to your best receiver, Charlie. And the best receiver. The best way to do it down here is inside. One of your two backs, you're tied in. But their strength is their wide receivers, which are outside. Kenny has completed 21 of 39 for 233 yards. But he needs here two more yards to his Has a man all alone. Number 35, Ken Thomas.
he felt the same way we did up here, that the prime strength of the receiving core is in their wide receivers, had everybody covered but the back. Kansas City regains the lead, 19-14. 7-16 left to go in the ball game. Here's the extra point. It's good. The margin returns to six. The Chiefs 20. The Raiders 14. 7-16 remaining. Here's the touchdown pass from Bill Kenny to Ken Thomas. Mary's of viewers in Denver and Seattle will be leaving this game in a few minutes for a telecast involving their home game. However, of course, the announcers there will be bringing you an update on what is happening here. And the rest of you, you'll stay with us and you'll be joining one of those other two games, second half of the doubleheader. Okay, let's go. In the rain. Montgomery and Bruin are deep for the Raiders. Taken at the 12 yard line by Clay Montgomery. To the 20. Flipped as he made his cut, came down about the 26 yard line. Seven minutes and five seconds left to go. The Raiders have the ball, and Bob, you made an interesting observation. The score is 20 to 14 Chiefs. And if the Raiders go down and score, Charlie, get a touchdown, and the game ends that way, it'll be the exact same score as it was the first time 21 20 Raiders. But that's, that's a long way to go and a lot of time to play. the drive 74 yards in 14 plays bucket complete Muhammad incomplete Second down and 10 with now exactly seven minutes left to go in the game. Charlie, the thing I'm impressed with, though, is Jim Plunkett in the ball game. His first drive, he moved him right down for a score. That ball was on the money. The offense is playing better with Plunkett in the ball game. On the first drive, 85 yards in 11 plays. And now the Raiders from their own 25-yard line. Second down and 10. Chief lead is 20 to 14. has pressure but gets it off and is pulled down by Frank Hawkins. A gain of nine yards. It'll be third down and one. Gary Green with the tackle. I'm impressed with Jim Plunkett. You know, Charlie, the Chiefs have six defensive backs in there. Maybe we can look at it again. No, I didn't. To tell you, to tell you the truth, I didn't notice. It looked like he was going to go in motion like he has been. You're right. He, he, you are right. See, he's going toward the line of scrimmage. Now, you cannot be going toward the line of scrimmage when the ball is snapped. Excellent call. Maybe the only thing the officials have missed in this ball game. But my partner caught it. Way to go, Doc. Little play action on first down. Lots of time. And has Josie Williams open. Charles Jackson. Makes the tackle at the 32-yard line. 28 yards on the play. Now, why all of a sudden can Plunkett find open receivers and they're wide open? What is Jim Plunkett doing yeah. that Mark Wilson couldn't do? And the thing he is doing is he had the benefit of being on the sideline for two and a half, three quarters to see what the Chiefs were doing defensively and just to kind of relax and, and feel the tempo of the ball game. He comes in and he says, if I get in there, these are the things I would do. And he is doing them, and he's a very relaxed ball player right now. First down, Kansas City 32. Missed a little. And he misses Marcus Allen. The other thing he's doing, Charlie, is he's seeing the entire field. He is seeing all five of his receivers. He wanted to throw that ball to Christensen. Christensen was covered with two Chiefs. He came off and threw it off in the flat, but he sees the entire field. Final score, 26-3. Gary Anderson with a 43-yard field goal ends that one. And the Hokey Gajon with an 11-yard run, 27 to 10, New Orleans. Here we have still four minutes and 49 seconds left to go. 
Chiefs lead it 20 to 14. Raiders on the move. Second and 10 at the Kansas City 32. Here they come. With the blip. It's picked up. And he commits drop. Malcolm Barnwell. Right in his hand. Plunkett says, listen, I'm, I'm back here fighting all these linebackers, a man in my face. All you got to do is catch it. There's nobody around you. <laughs> they blitzed him that time. Plunkett read it, picked it up, stood in there, put the ball right on the money. A little bit behind him, but very catchable ball. But that happened to you. What, do you say something to your receivers, or do you encourage them, or what's the reaction? Well, Charlie, some guys need something to be said to them, and some guys don't. But if they need it, certainly the quarterback will say, come on, let's go, pick it up a little bit. Bucket three of 787 yards. Flag is thrown downfield. The pass is complete to Todd Christensen. He is close to the first down. The flag was dropped around the 24. Mike Bell was putting the pressure on Jim Plunkett. One of the Kansas City Chiefs was clapping. Makes us, leads us to believe it may be against the Raiders. Offsetting penalty. He didn't hear the entire, he didn't hear the entire <laughs> he did, problem. He did not hear the entire conversation. <laughs> That's right. So we'll bring it back to the Kansas City 32 yard line. The down will go over. A look at the two head coaches in the ring. Holding, number 66 in the offense. Steve Sylvester. Holding on the defense, number 29. We'll offset. Albert Lewis. We'll replay the third down. You know something from an official standpoint, the referee standpoint, hardest thing to do. They got to get the play, the call right, and everything else. In addition, they've got to remember the numbers of the players. Sometimes that's hard to do. Third down and 10. Kansas City, 32. Jokey Williams has the first down. The youngster out of UCLA. Deron Cherry with the tackle. 19-yard line. Gain of 13. Here's a look at the defensive secondary. You see the red-shirted Chiefs running to double cover all the receivers. Plunkett is back there trying to find somebody, waiting for Doki Williams, 85 on the 20-yard line. It's a good play by Doki Williams and a good play by Plunkett. Plunkett is a gutsy quarterback. He stands back in there and says, get open, get open. I'm going to find you. Just get open. And he does. 19-yard line, first down. Timing pattern. It is caught by Doki Williams. and a perfect timing toss from Jim Plunkett. We are tied at 20. You can't say enough for Jim Plunkett. He goes back just a little lob downfield on the rookie Albert Williams. Rookie against rookie. Doki Williams wins that battle. It's 20 to 20, Charlie. Remember the shot of Plunkett on the sideline? You said he might. Next year he might be the comeback player. He might be the comeback player this year. <laughs> Now, 2020 to break the tie. Raiders have the lead again. 21 to 20, and that is the score of the first meeting in the Coliseum. But here we still have 3.49 left to play. We'll be back with a kickoff. And he returns to the 22-yard line. That scoring drive. Jim Plunkett and company, but you can capitalize Jim Plunkett, underline it twice. He has been the difference for the Raiders. He has been the offense for the Raiders. He has come in. The quarterback has to know what his uh, strengths are and be the catalyst, get the ball to him and let him perform, and he is certainly doing that today. Kansas City has a first down on their own 22-yard line. Three minutes and 40 seconds left to go. Raiders lead it 21 to 20. Not only was this the final score of the last time they met in the Coliseum last month, deep far side, double coverage, it's caught! A great play by Anthony Hancock! So 
a little play action on first down. Kenny throws it into double coverage. McElroy and Watts, double coverage. Hancock takes it away. That's not McElroy, it's Davis. But he takes it away from the receiver. That was a poorly, could have not been thrown, sorry. Double coverage, and he was covered well. They got away with something right there. And they got away with 51 yards, more than half the length of the field. Billy Jackson. Jackson from the 28 to the 26. A gain of a couple. It'll be second down eight. Now, to finish my thought, final score the last time they met was 21-20. Raiders, that is the score here. Nine seconds to go. Nick Lowry attempted a long field goal, but it was blocked by Ted Hendrick. What are you Deja, trying to say? <laughs> Deja vu in the rain. They don't want to score too quickly here, Charlie. That's another point. And there is the man, Nick Lowry. Two minutes and nine seconds in counting. And Fiorda's Brown was the back jumping around. Jackson. 23-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be third down and five. Bob Nelson makes the tackle. Two-minute warning will be given to both benches. The score is that close here. One point. Here's another of those fantastic finishers. A of the drive, 51 yards. This is what got them where they are, Charlie. The ball is up for grabs. Davis has it initially. Hancock says, no, wait a minute. My man threw that to me, not you. Let me have it. Big play for the Chiefs. Gets them in range. Ted Watts makes a tackle, a pass that should not have been thrown from a quarterback standpoint. The man was double covered, Charlie. When you throw a ball like that, more than half the time the ball is going to be intercepted. Third down five at the Raiders 23. Two minutes to go. Third and six to pick one. is complete. Kenny has completed 24 of 42 passes for 286 yards and a touchdown. Wilson completed 11 of 23 for 144. Bluckett has completed 4 of 8 for 100 yards. Two touchdown drives. One was a touchdown pass. Now, Nick Lauer, two for two in the game. You think you think the Chiefs are going to find where Hendricks lines up and make sure he doesn't get his big ball on this one? I would think that they would all be aware of where he is. From 33 yards away, an attempt of 43 yards. He hit from 54 and 48 in the game. He misses it. In the rain. The Raiders celebrate. Did he slip going through? Was it the footing? It just kind of squirted off. Charlie, it wasn't a good kick at all. I couldn't see whether or not the hold was good or whether he slipped or whether he just missed it. It happens to the best of them. Game's not over. Minute 52 to play. Let's see if we can pick it up on the replay. Good hold. I couldn't see if it was tipped. I, you know, I think it, that you were right. I don't think it was just a bad yeah, I, I think he just, just missed it. So Los Angeles takes over on their own 24-yard line. First down. Marcus Allen gets the call. They want to run out the clock. Of course, the Chiefs will use their timeouts. Defense has to hold. There might be one more opportunity for Kansas City, and there might not. I go both ways. Charlie, I think, I think when you have a great field goal kicker like the Chiefs have in Lowry, the, offensively, when you get the ball down there in range, you kind of let up a little bit. You don't get it as close as you should get it or could get it. And I think that may have been the fact there. Lowry's going to miss some, and he showed that there. We'll be right back after this word. Now, Charlie, is give away 30 seconds. They could have stopped the clock. They'd have a minute or so uh, left. There's always ways to stop the ball. Incompletion, throw it out of bounds. Now they have a timeout. They may not have enough time to use it. From the 30-yard line, Kansas City in their own territory. First down, 39 seconds left. Raiders lead by one, 21-20 from the shotgun. Bill Kennedy.
He throws deep, incomplete. Carson, the intended receiver, 34 seconds remaining. Lester Hayes was there for the Raiders. You figure they don't have to go too far, maybe 30 yards to be in range of Nick Lowry. Ball is resting on the 30-yard line. If you get it to the, if you get it 30 yards to the uh, Raider 40-yard line, to the 57-yard field goal, he's made it from that distance. His best is 58. You're right. So you're looking for 30 yards in 34 seconds. Better do it in 30, so he's got four seconds to kick. Little swing pass, left side. Field is down. Now they'll have to take the timeout. 36 yard line. No, they're going to hurry up. They must not have a timeout left, Charlie. That has to be it. It is intercepted. Rod Martin with the interception. Martin heads for the end zone. Martin scores a touchdown and slips as he tried to spike the ball. Interception, touchdown, worst spike of the year award, <laughs> and the ball game for the Raiders. The happy Tom Flores and a disgruntled John Makovic. You said earlier, Hendricks, you watch, Martin comes in and grabs it, takes the game away, and he does it right here. Hendrick gets the attention, Martin makes the big plays, and here he comes. This is the ball game right here. This puts the cap on the bottle. Now watch this at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. That's got to be the worst spike I've seen. You think they won't have some fun back in the <laughs> L.A. Raiders film room when they show that. He'll be getting razzed about that for weeks. Extra point. It is good. Raiders 28. And the Chiefs 20 with three seconds left to go. And the only thing that I can think of is, is that the, uh, they checked with the officials. They said you do not have a timeout remaining and the scoreboard is wrong. It's the only thing I can think of. Surely they would have taken it prior to the kick. Then they would have gotten the ball with it. a minute, minute and three seconds and, and some time to work. There's no question that that's the, that's the way it was, Jerry. The uh, score, scoreboard clock is obviously wrong. It's a tough loss for the Chiefs. The Chiefs were back in the, the hunt in the Western Division of the AFC. If they could have won today, and if, if Seattle could knock off Denver, Denver, they're one game out of first place with three other teams tied for first place. They didn't get it done. They only hope that they don't have to play Seattle in the first round of the playoffs because Seattle has some kind of jinx on it. Denver six and three. The Raiders will be seven and three, and Denver is at Seattle. So they, they maybe hope that that jinx kind of spills in with the Broncos. <laughs> but a good win for the Raiders in a good ball game. The clock starts when the ball is touched in the field of play. There's one lateral. There's two laterals. Why not? There's three. University of California. There's four laterals. There's five laterals. No, they're going to blow the play dead. And time has run out on Kansas City. And a joyous victory for the Los Angeles Raiders. 28 to 20. The Raiders' record now is 7-3 with six games to go. We'll be back. 